Hi everybody. Uh, today is a sad story of the gateway to Malacca, also known as the Formosa and uh, Porta di Santiago. Of course, many people have uh, yeah writers and uh, local and foreign have uh, written about this gateway. So I'm telling my side of the story. So we have read from so many, you know, publications or books. Okay. One day in 1807, you know, a young man traveled by boat from Penang. He was on sick leave. He was working in the Penang office. And he landed in Malacca, you know, because uh, historic city. He knew about it. That's why he came. His name was, uh, yeah, Stanford Rifles. When he landed, he was horrified to see and hear demolition in progress. Workers standing on top of the building, the fortress, were using hammers, you know, and smashing at the walls and uh, throwing down the bricks, you know, one at a time. Very quickly, he rushed to the man in charge and who was, uh, happened to be the resident of the place of Malacca, William Fagua. I think, uh, yeah, Rifles knew him as a friend because they were in the same office. You know, Rifles was working in the Penang office, okay? So, he asked him, what are you doing, William? You are destroying a heritage building. William said, I don't know, I'm only following orders, you know, from our, from your Penang governor, you know, Colonel Norman McAllister. You want, you can just write to him, tell him to stop, you know. I can't do anything. Well, uh, coming from Penang office, Rifles uh, knew that if the order had come from him, there would be nothing he could do. So he thought of another, an, uh, an idea. He had a friend in India, Lord Mintu. You know, Lord Mintu was the governor general of the British Empire, you know, of the East. Oh wow, he knew this man because he was the one who put him in Penang to work in the first place. So he dispatched a letter. And you know the letter take, took about, you know, two and fro, two weeks to arrive, even by boat. Well, he, he did just that, you know. Of course, a lot mean to, you know, gave the order to stop demolition. And by the time uh, the letter arrived at Malacca, Two weeks have passed. Three quarters of the fortress have gone to the ground, leveled, leaving only this gateway that you see today. You know, a lot of people, you know, especially the Dutch residents, they protested. They said, what's a beautiful building? Why you destroy it? They protested. And... Uh, William Fagwa heeded their pleas, actually. He had no choice. So what he did was, he did not demolish the third days. The third days, the red building built by the Dutch, you know, where there's a church, you know, the tower, you know, the centerpiece, and the big, big building, you know, beautiful masonry, red bricks. The internal part of the city, you know, was not destroyed. And Fagwa did a splendid job. He stopped the demolition then and there. Only the gateway that he had no choice by the time the letter came, you know. So, you know, what happened was the British, why the British wanted to destroy Malacca? Because, because uh, they knew because of the rivalry between the Dutch and the British in the spice trade, 
in the Far East. So, ding dong, ding dong, they knew, the British knew that one day, very soon, Malacca will go back, you know, to the Dutch. You know, they occupied Malacca from the Dutch in 1795. And they knew that this was 1807. So they knew that in a few years, you know, there would be... Because they, they were ne ne negotiating, you know, for a treaty at that time. And they knew, this uh, governor of, in Penang knew that, yeah, a treaty would soon be signed, you know. And then Malacca would revert back to the, to the Dutch, you know. So, so they did everything in their power. You know, to destroy the town, virtually destroy the town and empty it as well. Empty means the deportation of people, you know, from Malacca to the Penang office. That's why many Chinese and Indians, you know, the local population were deported. There was an exodus, you know, of uh, people from Malacca to Penang in the 1800, in 18 something. It is zero, you know, seven. I think, you know, I think about 20% of these uh, Malacca people have gone there. That's why you have a lot of relatives, you know, from Penang and Malacca. And that is the reason why there are so many Yongyas in Penang. Actually, they were from Malacca. This is the story. This is a sad story, but what we have left is this, the building. It stands. Okay, if you look at it, oh, that was the reason. They didn't want to leave anything to the Dutch. Well, the treaty was signed. The Anglo-Dutch treaty was signed in 1824. So what it was given back to the Dutch, no one, I mean, there were other buildings. Nothing was destroyed. They kept for a while. You know? They didn't touch. Nothing was touched. It was a, it was a, 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 a bad decision. You know, and Lord Min Tu also mentioned that it was a very bad decision. He mentioned something. There was a statement. He said it was a very bad decision by the authorities to want to, you know. And the destruction of the fort, he says, is the most, is the most piece of uh, bad misjudgment, you know. He said it was a bad, very bad misjudgment, but then the harm was done. The town was, the fort was destroyed. Okay, coming back to the fort, you see that uh, frontage of the fort. Here, it's the Dutch coat of arms. When the Dutch took over from the Portuguese in 1641, they you know they re redo this thing, and then they had the frontage in it with the Dutch is in their company coat of arms here. They did not destroy the fort. They never because it was a good fort, right? And also at the bottom here, if uh, on the ground here, if you go in, you notice that the flooring of the bricks were not positioned as it should, you know, as when you normally do a uh, flooring. In those days, uh, you, you form the bricks together, they would be, you know, that follow a pattern. They would follow a pattern. But here, the, it looks like the pattern was already, you know, was already uh, disturbed. It didn't follow the same flow, you know, of bricks. So if you look closely, you will find that, you know, you notice there is a big hole right in front. An imprint of a big hole, about uh, maybe three feet diameter. Three feet diameter, you know. So there's an imprint of a hole. Meaning to say that there is a tunnel going down. Steps going into a tunnel, leading to a tunnel. Where it leads to, of course, there were a lot of controversy. I have also read that, uh, you know, it led, the tunnel led to St. John's Fort, the White Fort in Banda Hile. The fight Fort in Banda Hile. All right. Okay. So, of course, uh, many ref uh, refute that. And, uh, but whatever it is, Okay, it could have gone to also St. Paul's Hill. But whatever it is, there was a tunnel. It could be a storage, I don't know. Because those days, uh, ancient people, 
were very fond of building tunnels. You read any history in the Middle Ages, you know, any in the countries in Europe, tunnel was very fashionable because it was meant, you know, to store things, a hiding place, you know, a kind of you know refuge. So you know, like、uh, Kelly's castle also had a tunnel. Nobody believed. From the castle, underground, under the water, it seems under the river. The, the what river was it? Yeah, the river and to the temple. Especially all old buildings, they all have tunnels. So it was not surprising to know or to learn or to read them. Like,、uh, of course, it's as、uh, as、uh, as a tunnel. Of course, it's controversial. So it's open to argument. But anyway, this is a picture of、uh, you know I have a book also. They had an exhibition. They had an exhibition in、uh, my office. Yeah, near my office, there they put Pustaka Negara years ago. So Portuguese people had an exhibition. So they gave me this book, you know, about this uh, Portuguese uh, empire, the Portuguese, you know, you know, Portugal in the opening of the world. These beautiful pictures, paint. These are all ancient, 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 you know, ancient、uh, drawings, beautiful drawings. Yeah. Okay. And you have ah,、uh, all right. You have pictures, Alfonso de Albuquerque. So this is a very, very nice book, you know. Okay, you can see the details. The people, you know, they kept a lot of records. Even today, I'm sure we go to Portugal or Holland for that matter. You see a lot of details that we haven't seen, but all in their language. So I'm sure there are many other things we have not discovered yet, you know, especially. About the tunnel, if you go to, you know, you can read Portuguese. You go to the, we have some of the documents, you know, in our library. We have which we photocopied, but they're all in Portuguese. And、uh, I don't think anybody took the trouble to really dig into it. But、uh, I think the best place to unravel the mystery is to go to the country ourselves. Like you know, if you know the history, even the history of、uh, Malacca, you can get from Holland. From Portugal, I'm sure you have because, you know, those days if they could draw things like this, you know, detail things like that, you know, what more documentation of the places they colonize? Check it out. So that, so I say it's a, a sad story, through nobody's fault, but it's in it's history, it's all part of history. So we cannot blame anybody, you know, the rivalry between these people, you know. So the Dutch and the British, you know, and the Portuguese. So it is、uh, history, a rich heritage. So at least now we have this. Look at this. So next time we look at this、uh, Porta de San Diego, it's not just he's trying to tell you something. There are a lot of stories here, you know, a teary story, a very sad story. So just don't look and take pictures, you know, and stand. Take a moment, now, you know. Take a moment. Take a moment to think of the past. You know, if it could talk, you know, it would be telling you a lot of stories. Okay, it's a beautiful story. Check it out. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.